Greetings, children of the night. I am Melting Man 234, and welcome to another episode of Forgotten Media, where I dig up some stuff you may or may not have heard of. Sometimes when digging up these forgotten memories, you might dig up stuff beyond the grave. <laughs> Good impersonation, ain't it? Well, since it's coming close to Halloween, I might as well just do a special Halloween episode for Forgotten Media, as we take a look at the Dark Castle games. Now, I know the Angry Video Game Nerd already reviewed the Genesis and CDI port, but for me, I'm just going to talk about the history of Dark Castle, so let's start off with the first game, simply known as Dark Castle, that was created by Silicon Beach Software and was first released for the Macintosh computer around 1986. Then during 1987 through 1993, the game was ported to DOS, Commodore 64, Commodore Amiga, Atari ST, Apple II, GS, Genesis, CDI, and finally the MSX. The story for the game is that an evil black knight has terrorized a local town, and it's up to Prince Duncan to venture into his castle and defeat the black knight. The gameplay has you going around the castle in a platform style, fighting cyclops, bats, rats, stone soldiers, and other creepy things. The castle has four doors and 14 levels, and each of them have their own fancy theme. The character Duncan can be a bit clumsy as he gets dizzy or dies if he falls from a great height, and his first weapon he gets are rocks, which seems odd because Duncan's a prince, so shouldn't he brought along like a sword or a mace or anything like that? Yeah, well. Later in the game, your rocks are upgraded to fireballs, and the shield protects you from any flying projectiles, which can be very useful. One thing to know about the Dark Castle games is that if you play it on the highest difficulty, you'll get to see the real ending. If you beat the Black Knight on advanced mode, which is the highest difficulty, he falls to his doom as Duncan does a victory dance. During its time, Dark Castle was a great game for the Macintosh. Of course, a lot of people say that it's garbage, mostly because of its Genesis and CDI ports and all that stuff with its lousy controls, but for me, I kind of see the Dark Castle as one of those games for, like, advanced gamers, and the game was a lot better on the Macintosh version before they butchered into other consoles, I think. In 1998, the game was later remade for its newer model of the Macintosh, known as Color Dark Castle. It's the same as Dark Castle, except that it's in color, it has a save feature, it has 16 levels, and it contains a secret level that gives you a special bonus. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, why do they call it Color Dark Castle when the other ports had color? Well, that's because the first model of the Macintosh was only in black and white, and since with its newer model it was in color, it kind of made sense why it was called Color Dark Castle and something like that. The first time I heard that name, it sounded like something for the Game Boy Color. They also ported Dark Castle onto mobile phones in 2005, known as Dark Castle Mobile, and it's pretty much the same as Dark Castle with a few differences. Next up is Beyond Dark Castle, which is a sequel to Dark Castle and was made by Silicon Beach Software again, and was released in 1987 for the Macintosh, and was ported to the Apple II, GS, Commodore 64, and Commodore Amiga in 1989. The story is that after Prince Duncan defeated the Black Knight, Duncan discovers a new area in the castle and finds out the Black Knight is still alive, so he goes forth into the new section of the castle to defeat the Black Knight once and for all. In this game, you have to travel through the castle walls and collect five orbs which will unlock the stage to battle the Black Knight. Gameplay is a bit similar to Dark Castle with some new features such as new enemies, a helicopter backpack, collecting bombs for items, new weapons, a save feature, and an interesting easter egg that if you play the game during Christmas or somewhere like that, It'll have the halls all decked out for its season. Just like the first game, you have to play it on the highest difficulty to watch the real ending. Once you defeat the Black Knight on advanced mode, he disappears and Duncan makes his way back out of a secret passage and does a little dance. Then suddenly, a ball of light strikes him and Duncan has become the new Black Knight, and the game ends with a pretty creepy cliffhanger. Overall, it's a pretty decent sequel during its time. A few years later, they announced in 2000 that a third Dark Castle was in the works, but it would take them almost 10 years to finish it, but they eventually made the third one. Return to Dark Castle that was created by Z Sculpt and Super Happy Fun Fun and was released for the Macintosh once again in March 14, 2008. The story takes place a few years after the events of Beyond Dark Castle, where a man named Bryant, who is a nephew of Duncan, has journeyed into Dark Castle and must find his father and defeat the reincarnation of the Black Knight. The game has you going around collecting items and... 10 orbs to access the final battle with the Black Knight. The game has over 50 levels, as some of them are new, and most of them are levels from both Dark Castle and Beyond Dark Castle, given massive upgrades with its graphics and such. So yeah, it's a bit like traveling down memory lane from Dark Castle and Beyond Dark Castle, with 
a few interesting upgrades, mostly new music for the stages, which is pretty cool since the other Dark Castle games for the Mac didn't have music back then. The game also has the ability to equip weapons, the ability to use teleportation to send you back to the main hall, and a bunch of other stuff. It has been said that there was going to be a level editor, but it wasn't included when the game was released. Super Happy Fun Fun has said that the level editor will be coming soon, but who knows when it will be released. Just like the other games, it has a real ending if you play it on the highest difficulty. If you beat the game on easy, the Black Knight will just laugh and say, Ha! You'll need to try harder than that for a real ending. So, once you beat the game on advanced mode and defeat the Black Knight, the armor flies off, revealing that Duncan, now an old man, who explains to his nephew that he defeated the Black Knight, and his armor took control over him, becoming the new Black Knight. But now the armor is looking for a new body to possess, and Duncan and Bryant rush out of the castle and find a ship near the castle. Before they return, Duncan takes his nephew to a place where he always wanted to go, and the game ends there. Since it left off in a cliffhanger, it's still debatable whether there's going to be a fourth Dark Castle game or not. But overall, Return to Dark Castle was challenging and pretty good at the same time. Nowadays the games are a bit hard to find, mostly all the different parts to Dark Castle and Beyond Dark Castle. Return to Dark Castle is a bit more of a fancy downloadable content, I think, so I don't think it isn't that hard to find. In closing, the Dark Castle series has a pretty interesting series with its renaissance look, its feel, but the series is pretty cool in its own way, even with its uh, highest difficulty and stuff. Well, that wraps up this episode of Forgotten Media. This is Melting Man 234 signing off and wishing everyone a happy Halloween!